guys, I'm trying to get a shot here of a buddy of mine. And he sits right up here. If I can zoom in on him for you. There he is right there. Tell you, I'm zoomed in, but I'm standing, I guarantee you, no less than 10 yards, probably more like about 7 yards, straight distance from this red tail hawk. There he goes over my head. Perch himself up there, get a little bit higher vantage point. But he, he's pretty trusting. He's been uh, coming down here and collecting my trap line scraps off of the flushing beam and he's kind of become a pet to me he's around everywhere I'm at if I'm at the cabin he comes there I'm back here in the hunters camp he comes here he kind of knows where the where the food trains at but he trusts me not to shoot him even though I'm carrying a gun 99% of the time there he's flying off there a little higher perch I think he's gonna investigate that field out there and see if he can find something running around Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd do today was, um, I had a lot of questions during the Advanced Scout documentary videos about why I only allowed black powder to be carried and questions about, you know, could you bring a bow and things like that. And next year we are going to allow people to choose between a bow or a black powder firearm. It had to be a single shot black powder firearm. And I have my reasons for that and part of that is safety. It's very hard to overcharge black powder when you're doing it on the fly. Smokeless powder is a whole different ball game when it comes to getting it charged correctly and not blowing up your gun. So that's part of the reason. The other reason is I want people to get used to the tradition of loading rounds on the fly, loading black powder and using black powder because I believe it makes your gun very, very versatile in this day and age when ammo is at a premium. Ammo is kind of hard to find. A lot of things that you can shoot from a 12 gauge shotgun using black powder are very common. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of walk you guys through my common man black powder kit for a 12 gauge shotgun and then maybe you'll understand a little bit more about why I'm so hot on this in the 21st century long hunter series and why I like the 12 gauge single shot shotgun so well. Stay with me guys. Okay so let's talk about the firearm itself first. This is just a single shot New England Arms or New England Firearms NEF single shot 12 gauge break open shotgun. Doesn't matter if it's an H&R, doesn't matter if it's an NEF, doesn't matter if it's a Stevens, any single shot break open shotgun will work good for a black powder type application with what I'm going to show you today. Now, the important thing is the choke. You want a modified choke or cylinder bore choke firearm for this. You do not want full choke. I've done a video explaining chokes in the past. You can look that video up. But you want a modified or a cylinder bore choke for black powder application, especially if you're planning on shooting round ball and things like that from it. So that takes care of the firearm portion of it. You can get these things at pawn shops and gun shows for 100 bucks or less, easy enough. So now let's discuss for a minute the accoutrements. And I've just got, again, I'm going common man with this stuff. This is just the Pathfinder Haversack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these things out and then we'll kind of talk about them as we go here a little bit. Because some of this stuff would be more for a little bit longer term while some of it is for the short term. But this whole bag, even with all this stuff in it, weighs almost nothing. I mean, less than two or three pounds probably. Maybe two or three pounds. Okay. Let's see. I got a couple more things in here. Okay. Now it empties out the bag. Now, and I've just got a couple pieces of rope attached to this bag for small game loops. If I'm out hunting small game, whatever the case may be, I can tie a loop in that thing and put that small game leg right through there or the head right through there and attach it to my bag easy enough to carry it back to camp instead of having to put it in a pocket. And that makes up my shooting bag for my black powder application for the 12 gauge. So let's talk about the necessities of what you're going to want for the short term real quick first. Okay, so first things first, 
The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need one of these adapters from Short Lane Arms or from the Pathfinder School. They're made by GunAdapters.com and it is a 209 shotgun primer for a 12 gauge shotgun. And really what that does is when you shove that into the breech of your 12 gauge and lock it in with the O-rings, it turns your single shot 12 gauge into a muzzle loader at that point because now when you open up the breech you put a 209 shotgun primer which is the other thing that you have to have which is what these are these are triple seven shotgun primers 209 you can buy these things at walmart for about seven dollars a hundred i just keep them in a small cheesy tin any kind of tin will work for that and i keep those in my shooting bag so that is your ignition now instead of putting a 209 shotgun primer in the back of a shotgun shell you put it into this adapter but i always load that last so once you've got that adapter in there that's the first thing you're going to need is that adapter i always carry two of those just in case one were to get lost fall out of the gun fouled up somehow that i couldn't shoot it i always try to carry two of these with me and then again i carry a small tin of 209 shotgun primers in this case i've got about 50 or 60 in this tin short term if I were going to be a longer term or a longer term camp, I would obviously have a resupply at that camp of more, but this is more than going to last me for a week of hunting with no problem. All right, so once we've got that taken care of, the next thing that we need to build our shotgun shell as black powder is we're going to need some type of powder. And for me, you can buy the fanciest powder horn on the planet, and they all look really cool. Most of them are pretty expensive. You can buy uh, brass type flasks that will throw certain measures of powder, things like that. Those are really cool too, and I've got several of them, and they work great. But for the common man, just a peroxide bottle like this works fantastic. Okay, And this is just a brown hydrogen peroxide bottle that's filled with uh, Pyrodex RS. Now for this application, and this is the beauty of the 209 shotgun primer, is you can shoot black powder substitutes like Pyrodex RS, like American Frontier, all of those types of things that are substitute black powders you can use with a 209 shotgun primer. If you're using a cap primer, like a cap and ball type primer, like you would use for one of the old CVA 50 caliber cap locks or something like that, you're going to have to be more powder specific and if you're using a flint lock, you're going to have to be all even more powder specific. You're going to have to have real black powder and you're going to need triple F or better if you're going to shoot a flint lock for the most part. Double F will work, but triple F you definitely want for the pan. So I just always carry all triple F. And if you're shooting a cap lock, again, double or triple F is what you're going to want. But it has to be real black powder. The beauty of this system is it will shoot any black powder. Whether it's real black powder or a black powder substitute like Pyrodex RS that you can buy for $11 a pound versus the $17 to $20 a pound for real black powder, you can shoot out of this weapon. Now the next thing that you're going to want is you have to have a measure for that powder. Real simple common man way to do that. I've got a leather lanyard here that's got two tools on it. And other than my pocket knife, these are the only two tools that I need for this gun. I have one that is just a piece of copper pipe, half inch diameter, that's been measured to hold 60, or I'm sorry, that's been measured to hold 100 grains of Pyrodex. And it's been cut off, smashed on the end first with a hole drilled in it. Pour the powder in there out of a specific measure. It holds 100 grains to the top. And I chopped it off and sanded it and filed it off. Then I drilled a hole in it so I could put it on a lanyard. The other thing is just a pick, a touch hole pick. And that's just a piece of number nine trapping wire like you would use for a snare stand. And the only thing that's really for is to make sure that there's no fouling in the hole in that touch hole where your primer goes. So if that gets fouled out with powder, you can just shove that in there and ream it out and you're good to go for the next shot. So those two tools are important to have. I always keep them right around my neck. Now, once we've got our powder measured from our common man powder horn here, and we've measured our powder and we've dumped that in, we already have our adapter in the gun. At that point, we're going to need wadding because we need to build a shotgun shell. What I generally carry for wadding, very common man, very cheap. You can buy big bags of it for, you know, probably less than five bucks is regular sheep's wool sheared right off the sheep. And we sell this on our website. <clears throat> and the reason I like this so much is, number one, it's flame retardant. So when you shoot it out of the gun, it doesn't come out in a big ball of fire and land in the woods somewhere and catch the woods on fire, like paper patching materials and things like that might, or natural cotton material patchings might. This is not going to do that. The other thing is, because of the lanolin in this, it 
lubes the bore a little bit when it goes out, and I can also use this to clean my firearm. Also has trapping applications that you've seen in the modern trapping series. So it's a very multifunctional item, and you can stuff an absolute ton of it in a bag, enough to last you a lot of shots. So that's going to go above my powder before I pour in the shot, and then again on top of the shot. So the next thing I'm going to need, once I put this patch in there or this wad in there, I'm going to need a ramrod. Now what I've done in this case, any cleaning rod for a 12 gauge will work. This is an antique cleaning rod. It's made out of wood. And if I'm going to load the gun, all I do is screw this thing together and it becomes my ramrod. So I've got basically a takedown ramrod for this gun. It just needs to be a little longer than the barrel. I've got three sections to do it with. And then I can also use this as a cleaning implement as well as just a piece of string with a toggle on it to pull sheep's wool through. But I've also got a scrub brush in here. Okay, so we've got our powder and our wadding in and now we have to put shot down the barrel or round ball down the barrel depending on what we're going to shoot. And what I prefer to do, in all honesty, is I really prefer to carry just another small bottle, just like this, and that contains my shot. And I carry generally number six or number four shot. And it's important with these bottles to have the opening fairly small so that when you pour it into your measure, you can almost funnel it with your fingers to fill that measure up. And you're not spilling this stuff all over the place. Just like that, okay? I spilled a couple of them there. But, and you want the same thing with your powder. You want that powder to have a small opening on it. That's why I chose these small opening bottles like the peroxide and the shampoo bottle. Now, let's talk about why the lead shot. Because you can also, and this is just a, a bottle, this is just an energy drink bottle. Just one of those sour apple five-hour energies. And what it's full of is it's full of copperhead and normal steel BBs, all right? And BBs are an absolutely devastating load. If you look at the video, the documentary that we did on the uh, scout camp from last week, you will see that about a 45 pound coyote was killed with a BB load out of a 12 gauge. BBs are absolutely devastating. To me, BBs only have one downfall for versatility's sake. And that's what I'm all about with this stuff, is I'm about the versatility. The, the problem with the BB is, it's always going to be a BB. Now, yes, you could make some kind of a, a wax slug out of it, probably, if you had the materials to do that, but you're not going to melt this down. It's a steel BB. The advantage you have to shot is, I can take shot, and if I have a ladle, like this one here, that you just put a stick in and put it over the fire, I can pour shot into this ladle and melt it down. And if I have a couple of different molds in my bag, and again, you're talking more expense, but you're talking more versatility. And I have a double-lot buckshot mold here, and I have a 12-gauge round ball mold here. So now I have the ability to make buckshot if I want to make a few buckshots to go out and hunt larger game with, or a solid round ball for a 12-gauge if I want to go out and hunt something even bigger, like a deer or what have you. So I carry a couple molds with me for the longer term and a ladle. And I would carry more shot and things like that back at my camp as well. I have a funnel, and this is just a rubber funnel that you get from the baking section of any store that you can buy baking uh, apparatuses at. They usually come in packs of three. But it works really well for transferring from containers to other containers like powder or shot. That works really well for that. And then the last thing that I've got is just this AK-47 bottle. This is another one of the AK-47 bottles. And this one's got, again, just virgin olive oil in it. And that's what I used to maintain my firearm with. So between the cleaning rod, the oil, and a piece of string with a toggle on it that I can drop down through the bore because it opens up, and I can pull that through to clean the gun, or I can clean the gun with this. I can maintain and oil the mechanisms with this. I can clean the black powder out with hot water at camp out of my container. The only other thing I really need is a jackknife, and I carry this old Ooster Imperial brand jackknife because it has a screwdriver and things like that on it, and that's all I need to really disassemble this firearm. So I can totally disassemble that firearm, take the barrel completely off of it, and wash the barrel out all alone away from the gun if that's what I want to do in the creek or whatever as I've done in past videos. So these are the accoutrements that you need. Now, short term, really, if you're just going out hunting for a day or two or whatever the case may be, you really could get away with a couple of these five-hour energy drink bottles. You could put one with powder and one with shot, 
and that would probably give you a dozen shots. Then you just need some wadding material. You'd also obviously need your ramrod, but you could cut a stick and do the same thing with it. Lots of guys do that at the scout. Just cut a straight stick and use that for a ramrod all weekend. And then you need obviously your powder measure and your touch hole pick. You're going to need your caps and you're pretty well set for a couple days of hunting. And that's again, that's the versatility of this whole black powder situation. Now yeah, you can carry shotgun shells, you can carry number six shot, number four shot, number two shot, buck shot, you can carry all of this stuff and then you're fishing around to try to figure out where it's at and which one's which. Or you can just load the gun for what you want to hunt with black powder before you go and just deal with that. And in an emergency situation, I'll tell you now, if I had a load of shot in this gun, like six shot that I was going to hunt small game with, and I saw a deer, I'm going to shove ball right down on top of that, shove another piece of wad on top of it out of the bottom of my bag, and boom, that's where I'm going with that. Guys, I thank you for joining me for another video today, and just one final little thought I want to leave you with is, I've had a lot of people request or ask me if they could bring a bow and arrow to the scout class next year in lieu of the 12 gauge shotgun. And I told them yes, because that would allow you legally at that point, because deer season is open, you could actually shoot a deer with that bow and arrow. But what I want you to understand is that in reality, it would be very, very difficult for one person to live completely off of a bow and arrow in all four seasons in the state of Ohio. Back in the day when they had nothing but bows and arrows and they were living off bows and arrows, they had tribe members hunting together. They were driving game to each other. They were hunting with lots and lots of bows and arrows, not just one person hunting everything for himself. If I didn't have a good day today, I could go back to camp and somebody else probably did. In the eastern woodlands, as thick as the undergrowth is during the spring and summer months, you'd be hard pressed to get an easy shot with a bow. And you're going to have to get very, very close to game to be able to do that without arrow deflection from the undergrowth. With a shotgun or something like that, you have a much better chance of living off that game. That's the other reason I'm not really fond of rifles for the long term or even a seasonal type firearm for self-reliance because you're not going to be able to trust in that weapon to be able to get a clear enough shot. With a shotgun, it's exactly that. It's a spraying pattern. Something is going to hit that animal. That's the reason I'm so hot on the 12-gauge shotgun. I hope maybe that explains some of my mentality to you. And again, everything is environmentally affected. So the reason I'm saying 12-gauge is because I live in the eastern woodlands. The undergrowth is very thick, especially in the summer and the spring, like I said. And a shotgun is a much more effective weapon. It's much more effective at penetrating that undergrowth than any single projectile would be. I thank you for joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my instructors, affiliates, sponsors, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.